Mike with www.lawmanguitars.com. Okay, I've got one of my personal guitars I'm selling today. That's right, you don't get a chance at one of my personal guitars every day, but today you do. Uh, I have been hoarding this uh, 1960 Gibson Country Western model uh, J45 for uh, a long, long time. And I just took it out the other day and I went, this guitar deserves to be played and it's just not getting the play. I've got uh, too many guitars. So you probably heard that before. Uh, but this one is going to be a sad day when it goes. Uh, this has been one of my favorite guitars. I've used it extensively, uh, but it's just not getting enough play. Uh, and it's just a marvelous, marvelous, marvelous guitar. Now when I got it, I cannot claim all of this uh, pick wear uh, right around the sound hole here. Uh, someone else loved this guitar a lot more than I did. Uh, and they played it uh, and it shows. Uh, however, uh, this guitar is in remarkable shape for a 1960. Now, they made the country westerns uh, starting in 1956. Um, and uh, let's see, I would have been four years old when they started making these. So the 1960 uh, puts it just a few years after they came out with this model. And uh, they stopped making them in 1969. Now, the 1960 was one of the last with the round or sloped shoulders. Uh, they went to the more high shoulders uh, after that. So you, the ones that are more desirable, of course, are the ones that are rounded um, and uh, uh, and sloped like uh, like this one is and uh, it's just a fantastic fantastic guitar uh, what Gibson did is they made some of these uh, they were there uh, they called them the southern jumbo sometimes uh, and they were made for some people down in the south was what I was reading and then they just kind of morphed into the country western so it says inside uh, the guitar Gibson country western model uh, but it's basically a J45 that uh, that we all know and love it's got a spruce top mahogany back and sides and of course it has the uh, single line uh, Cluson tuner so we know that uh, it puts it before 1962 uh, it's got the original bridge saddle bridge pins uh, original nut, original frets, the parallelogram uh, fret markers are in marvelous shape. And I have to say, uh, the one thing I wish we could figure out how to do is to show finish crazing in our pictures. Uh, what is finish crazing? Finish crazing is what happens to these very thin nitrocellulose finishes uh, over the years from temperature changes, from humidity changes. Uh, it just slightly cracks. Now that is not a wood crack. Don't, uh, don't mistake a, f a finish craze with a uh, body crack. That has nothing to do with that. Uh, it is just simply the finish reacting to the different uh, conditions that are going on around it. And when you see that on a guitar like this, you just go, Oh, I mean, I, I have to say, I love these finishes when they, then they get finished crazy. And then, of course, it's got pick scratches, and, and uh, uh, it just, this guitar has been played and loved, and it shows that it had thousands and thousands of songs in it. And trust me, there's thousands and thousands of songs left in this guitar as well. Uh, now, there's no uh, lifting of the uh, uh, pick guard. Uh, the bridge is securely on there. There is not a hint of, of bellying on this uh, nice flat top, and uh, it's just in great shape. Uh, there's a little bit of uh, wear from uh, hands around the back of the neck, of course. You would expect to see that on, on one of these guitars from this age. Original truss rod cover, the original tuner buttons are on here, and uh, you know, no real buckle rash on this uh, mahogany back. It's just really in, in beautiful, beautiful shape. Uh, it has what I call button scratches. You know, you're playing in your cowboy uh, uh, buttons will uh, will make some impressions, uh, but it d isn't all scratched up from a from a belt buckle or anything like that. So it's just in marvelous shape. And <laughs> I got to say, I'm a Gibson guy. I play Gibsons. Um, um, they're my daily players. I'm also a worship pastor, and I use a Gibson, uh, a vintage Gibson in uh, in church as well. And so these just feel at home with me. Now I want to mention uh, this is also a 24 and three quarter inch scale neck, which feels just slightly different than a lot of them. Uh, and I want to point that out. So uh, it's just slightly longer, which will give it just a little bit more beef in the sound. So it... Uh
Dr. Duck, Phosphorus, Bronze Strings on there going slightly out of tune. You get the idea. I want to miss this guitar. Uh, some lucky buyer is going to really, really be happy when this guitar shows up on their doorstep. Uh, it is just a fantastic guitar. It has the Lawman Mike's highest recommendation. This guitar is beautiful. Now, I also have been preserving the original case with that guitar. Now, this is what would have come with that guitar. It would not have come with a hard shell case in 1960. It would have come with this case, uh, original case. Uh, it it's, has the brown alligator looking uh, lizard uh, Tolex on it. This case is in marvelous shape for 1960. All the uh, uh, binding uh, on it is still here. None of it is loose. It's just really in great shape. The hinges are here, including the leather hinge, although it's getting brittle. That, uh, keep an eye on it because it is brittle, but it's still there. The original handle, all the uh, 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 hasps are still here, the latches. And then inside, it's just a beautiful, beautiful case. I mean, it's uh, the uh, brown felt is in nice shape. There's no funny odors. There's no indication that there was ever uh, any uh, um, water damage or mustiness or anything. And even the accessory box is here. Uh, and it has the Gibson uh, metal logo on it. So the accessory box is here. It's in great shape. It's beautiful. So I have to say, um, as nice as that guitar is, this case is just as nice. So uh, for you guys who are going to play this guitar as on a regular basis and take it out of the house, please, please get a gig bag and carry the guitar in that. This case should be put under the bed. It's, uh, it's historically correct. Uh, and it should stay with that guitar, and please don't beat this case up. They're really hard to find, uh, and uh, it uh, should stay in as nice a shape as it is today. So you get this really cool case. You get that really cool 1960 Gibson Country Western guitar with fantastic uh, player wear and finish crazing. Uh, we know it's a 1960, by the way. I forgot to tell you, uh, inside the factory order number, which is posted just underneath the neck, uh, has an R. It starts with an R. And if you go into uh, uh, the archives of uh, Gibson, you'll find out that R is a 1960. So that's how we date it. Uh, there are no serial numbers on that, just factory order numbers. So you have to date it by that. So uh, you get the cool guitar, you get the cool case, you get uh, uh, the Lawman's highest recommendation. So check it all out at www.lawmanguitars.com where we have all of our really cool guitars. We've just updated our new website. It's really, really cool. It works on your phone now, so uh, you can do it from your phone, which I know most of you do. Uh, and if you're on your uh, computer, you will see some really crazy cool pictures uh, that we took uh, of the guitars around the shop. Uh, we've got all our demos in there. You can watch demos and uh, you can, of course, buy guitars. So check it out. Uh, also, while you're there, please sign up for our website, or, I'm sorry, for our uh, newsletter, which uh, we're going to be starting next month. I'll keep everybody informed of what's going on at Lawman Guitars. I'll give you some behind the scenes looks. I'll also uh, tell you about some upcoming guitars that are coming and uh, they'll just be a lot of fun and I'll make sure I communicate with you. So if you sign up, I will communicate. So we really appreciate you watching our videos. We really appreciate you buying our guitars and thanks a lot for watching this one today.